Hey guys, it's Rudy Rico. Welcome back to another video. Welcome back to another movie review where today I watch Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. And this movie is very good. I enjoyed it very, very much. Um, I'm just going to give a quick overall review before I go into spoilers. So, somehow, they pulled off an Avatar 2 and they made this movie look even more beautiful than the first one. Everything about this movie was beautiful. Every single frame, every single second, it was just a good thing to look at. And as well as that, the characters in this were really good, really well thought out, and a lot of them had a different take. Uh, Spider-Punk and The Spot, I really loved those guys, they did a really good job with them. They did a really good job with making them their own. Um, I loved a lot of things about this movie, uh, however... <laughs> The pacing could get a bit slow at times, and there were some moments throughout the movie where the audio sort of didn't make sense, like characters would be talking really lightly and hearing each other from like 10 meters away when something really loud is happening. That kind of didn't make sense. Okay, that's pretty much my overall review of the entire movie. I'm going to go into spoilers now. If you haven't seen the movie yet, I suggest you go and watch it. It's very good. There's your warning, three, two, one. I love the multiverse stuff in this movie and it was all written really well. The story was captivating and actually made sense which is good because multiverse stuff in movies can get very confusing especially with Marvel ones when they just contradict their own rules straight away. But yeah I really liked seeing some Spider-Men in there. They did a really good job with the fan service. Obviously we had Scarlet Spider, Spectacular Spider-Man, uh, Andrew and Toby made a little appearance. My boy Yuri was in it for a bit. Um, they even had Spider-Man's conscious from the Ultimate Spider-Man, which was incredible. And now I'm just wondering if this movie was canon, because I want to see Yuri's Spider-Man explain to, you know, Miles that he went to the secret Spider-Man society in Spider-Man 2. That'd be fun as. Now there is one gigantuan problem that I had with this movie, and this problem brings the mark, the rating that I give it, down so, so much. The ending. The ending of this movie sucked. It was so bad. Not finding out that Miles was meant was, wasn't meant to get bit by the spider and now his universe is corrupt because there's no Spider-Man. I really like that part. It ended on a cliffhanger and it ended in such a bad way. Gwen got all of the Spider-Men team. I was so ready to hear Nicolas Cage. I didn't get to hear him, unfortunately. And this is where the movie ended. You know, Gwen getting a team of Spider-Men going to help Miles. Why did it end there? Why did it end with Miles being strapped to a boxing bag looking into his self's eyes? It just really didn't make sense. There was no need for it and it kind of pissed me off a bit. I'm theorizing that Sony's going to have a bit of a chat with Disney for the next one. Now that they have this movie out in the public, I feel like Disney, Sony... Come on, strike a deal so we can get Tom, Toby, and Andrew back in the same room together. And I am giving this one a 7 out of 10. I would have given it an 8 if it wasn't for that ending. Because it just proved that this whole movie was kind of like a filler. It, it felt like Age of Ultron. If Age of Ultron... I mean... Oh, <laughs> it felt like Age of Ultron, but if I didn't like Age of Ultron at the end. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. If you did, please make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and until then... Goodbye. Also, everyone was so high.